say, let's see here. Bismillah. Uh, how come I pushed that by mistake? Because it's very close to the other button. 202-912-8100. Hello. Uh, this is William Hale calling for um, RTKL Architecture Firm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to speak with whomever uh, is in charge of public relations in regards to the United States Capitol Underground Visitor Center and some design problems there, please. I'd like to speak with uh, anyone from your firm uh, who can uh, take my suggestions regarding upgrading the U.S. Capitol Underground Visitor Center so it's a safer place? Okay, thanks. We need to change the way we design, says Brian. Projects. 1000 Ocean, so cross reference Ocean Boulevard, critical cultural. Here's Zhai Guang Liu, mixed use. Yes, you call about the Center? Yeah, I have some suggestions to make it a safer place. I figured if I was saying all this stuff to the U.S. Capitol Police and the visitors there, <clears throat> I should be polite enough to call RTKL Associates and uh, try to share my concerns with you so that we could work together because I don't want to embarrass you. My name is William Hale, H-A-L-E. I'm also known as Haji Mohammed Omar. And my U.S. Senator is Susan Collins from the great state of Maine, and also Angus King, a U.S. Senator from the great state of Maine, and I've spoken with their offices about my concerns. My phone number is 202-912-8100. Yeah, God willing, I hope. Uh, I want to be polite and include you in uh, upgrading the solutions because uh, perhaps uh, you guys were not adequately informed at the time of the design in the building. So hopefully... What's the problem with the building? Uh, biologic hazard. Uh, the doors don't open. You have to manually touch the doors to open them. 20,000 people a day touching the door. Six people dead in China from avian bird flu. That's one problem. Another problem is even though I go through the valley of death, I shall not fear for the Lord is my protector. Getting all these people to stand down there in this valley of death where anybody can toss a grenade down while they're all bunched up and nobody's gone through a metal detector is not very good uh, security. They should be up at uh, uh, ground level taking the elevators down. That Somebody had the foresight to put the elevators in, thank God. So... Um, Maybe we can work together to uh, have people take a number like you do at the butcher shop at the market. P take your number, wait till your number's called, then you can enter the elevator with your group. You don't have to stand next to anybody that you don't want to stand next to. Uh, you can be safe and visit the Capitol. Okay. So we will see what we can do about that. Um, when the last time you've been there? Recently? 
Uh, yeah, I was there uh, yesterday and today, and uh, I've been there before. I've been inside. Uh, yeah, God willing, I hope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How can I help you? Hi, Rebecca. You can help me if you can uh, PKL uh, to um, work with us to develop solutions for uh, upgrading the security of the U.S. Capitol Underground Visitor Center. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, 20,000 people a day are touching the door to open it to come in and. Uh, with six, six people. Uh, William Hale, H A L E. I'm also known as Haji Mohammed Omar. Okay. My U.S. Senators are Susan Collins from Maine and U.S. Senator Angus King, recently elected. I've okay. spoken with them about the, my concerns. And so um, the uh, uh, six people died uh, today in China from avian bird flu. And here, the U.S. Capitol Police are requiring everybody to open a door uh, and touch the same door handle to go in to the visitor center. Uh, so maybe uh, something like the um, handicap doors where uh, an electric eye senses a person coming and opens the door automatically could alleviate the uh, sanitary problem. Uh, the other problem, is, well, there's several other problems that U.S. Capitol Police are having everybody bunch up before they go through the metal detector. Uh, and with six people dead from avian bird flu in China today, that not very sound policy uh, in terms of people being contaminated. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, someone had the wisdom to put in a couple of elevators there, uh, and maybe uh, RTKL could... Um, work with us so that we could design something like at the uh, a butcher shop at the supermarket where it says take a number, wait till your number's called and then uh, people could stand anywhere uh, with their number, they wouldn't have to stand next to anyone they didn't want to stand next to. Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh that's the timer, okay. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't have to stand next to anyone they didn't want to stand next to. And then uh, the elevators there could have a little scoreboard kind of display above the door, and you'd see your number displayed, and then you could uh, go into the elevator uh, with your group or people that you knew. You wouldn't have to go into the elevator with anyone you didn't know. And then after you go through the uh, U.S. Capitol Police uh, metal detectors and biologic wipes and stuff like that, then you could get in line to go to the movie or stand next to anybody because everybody been checked. Yeah. Um, then the third thing is, uh, even though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. The Lord is my protector. Uh, somehow walking down there into that ravine to go into the underground visitor center wasn't my original idea when I proposed this thing uh, 17 years ago, or whenever that was, that I spoke with the senators about putting in this thing, uh, my idea was that you would go over to the Library of Congress or the court or somewhere like around 2nd or 3rd Street, pretty far away from the Capitol, and you'd go down and then walk through a nice tunnel, like we have a lot of tunnels, and you'd enter the Capitol. But instead, we kind of took out one-third of the lawn there and uh, made it more like a water runoff kind of thing. And... Anybody walking by up there on the railing can just toss something down in there and do a lot of damage. Uh, it might be better to uh, uh, restrict the uh, access to elevators only to go down and go in uh, so that people could uh, be you know, 
stand where they want, see who's seeing them. Uh, I even propose that the elevators double as scanners for biologic and uh, metal detectors. And I suggested to China that they patent and uh, mass produce and globally market elevators that doubled as uh, metal detectors and biologic hazard scanners. And once you get them in the elevator, if somebody's going down and beep, 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 they have avian bird flu, the door doesn't open, they keep going down, and then you pick them up in the holding area in the basement, you say, I'm sorry, you've tested, uh, you've indicated positive for avian bird flu, we're taking you to the hospital, and... The elevator can double as transportation and containment both, yeah. Uh, so um, maybe RTKL would like to work with some MIT engineers and we could patent elevators that double as containment and uh, biologic and metal detectors uh, as well as transportation for access so you get all three or four functions in one uh, thing. And then we could maybe fill back in that uh, valley there and restore the one-third of the um, lawn that we lost to the grading of the thing uh, and teach our kids that you want to try to stay up and once you start going down you lose your tactical advantage uh, historically at least I don't know if with modern warfare you're better off going down but as far as I know you're better off being up higher uh, and um, that way, uh, then we got that causeway in there. It looks like something that, out of the movie. Have you seen Jack the Giant Slayer yet? No, no, no. Yeah, they did a good job, the Jack the Giant Slayer. Uh, I want to recapitalize the U.S. Treasury so that we get like 10 to the 30th dollars uh, to deal with the 10 to the 16th dollar bullies. And um, they have a big scene there where the giants attack the castle in the movie, and it looks just like the U.S. Capitol uh, it's like a moat and a drawbridge. I don't know if RTKL realized that when you put it in. It looks like a moat, uh, alligator moat with two Chinese lanterns on either side to approach the U.S. Capitol from the east. And I think one guy thought it was going to be like, oh, that's an extension of the Smithsonian Mall to the east. So you get your feeling of putting a uh, humanitarian corridor around the world on the Tropic of Cancer. But no, it doesn't work at that scale. Uh, so you, we might want to restore the original curves that were up there so you realize, like, with the reflecting pool uh, on the west front, the architect uh, made us realize that the shortest distance between two points is not necessarily the best architectural solution and that uh, having to defer uh, to the... Um, having to defer to the acceleration of curvature, the, what they call angular momentum, and to change our, our pathway in order to get to where we're going uh, to make ourselves uh, subordinate to the uh, uh, law instead of uh, being uh, the cut across the lawn and beat a trail into the grass sort of thing. Uh, the power of the curve. If you look at all the classically designed parks uh, in Europe and here in DC, I think even, you'll find a lot of curved pathways and stuff. And um, I don't know if you want to go that far, but. Um, what are the of the National Mall? It's not curved at all. Yeah, the Smithsonian. Yeah, that, that's why. I, and one officer came up to me and said, Well, you got your steps and you got your smooth, uh, like, the steps represent the Eid or the seams, and the smooth ramp down there represents the Ramadan, uh, the non-mutually exclusive that converges upon itself and then passes through itself, turning inside out to produce the mutually exclusive that so we know and love as the particles and the fields that we deal with. Creation, sort of a Masonic kind of symbolism, but uh, it doesn't work for... Um, having a street go right up to your front steps. The classical architects knew to have curves in it so that you had to bend your path as you walked and that was the uh, miracle of the creation, the nonlinear the nonlinear power of the physical and the um, uh, so civilian law. Yeah. Have you reached out to the architects of the Capitol? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, I, I have. Okay. They fired him. They fired him last time. Okay. So what we would normally do in these types of conversations, hear your comments. I will definitely let the architect, the primary senior architect for that project know. Good. However, in order for us to even move forward with the changes to any projects that we have, it's essentially significant this project that we're referring to. It has to be determined by the architect of the capital because they are the ones that are um, opening the construction of that project or what we saw it. Yeah. We play a, a major part of designing it. Um, but your points are very good. What I'll do is I'll let, definitely let our team here know and see if there's any contact. But every time it seems that you're pretty well connected um, and you've had these conversations with your senators, perhaps we need not to the architect of the capital may be the best solution for you. He was like uh, four months away from retirement, and they fired him. Oh wow! Yeah, they can be pretty. Who can who can be pretty mean around here? I don't know who the new guy is. I can try to talk to him also, but I did contact them the, before about this, and uh, uh, I can try again. I hope you have a, some kind of mechanism that you can let the architect of the Capitol know you've heard from the general public, and maybe between the two of us and our, I'll try to get my senators involved, uh, between the three parties involved, uh, we can uh, do something about it, because uh, in India, uh, last night, uh, our time, uh, 30 people were killed when a uh, substandard addition to a building collapsed on them. Uh, and that was after a conversation about uh, Istanbul with uh, who about evacuation quarters. Oh, that guy from the State Department over in the Russell office building. Uh, if you guys are interested, I've got some projects that you might want to get involved with. Uh, I, uh, there's a, Turkey is focusing on 2025. They want to have something like Shanghai Expo 2010 in Istanbul. So if you guys are interested, what I'm proposing for Turkey and Istanbul is to uh, pick designated streets and widen them up like the Smithsonian Mall so they can have exhibition spaces for their 2025 of exposition and at the same time develop evacuation corridors and access corridors for emergency vehicles. So if and when Istanbul's hit by an earthquake, again, they're prone to it, they're due, then uh, one of the major causes of death is the inability of ambulances and stuff to get to the affected people. So um, there's a dual or triple purpose in that uh, to get Istanbul to have some wider corridors uh, and it'll be good practice for the, uh, they'll call them the pigs companies, the Portugal, Spain, uh, Italy, and Greece. Uh, they're having a lot of trouble with their economies and if they got with uh, RTKL uh, then, and some other firms and did this project in Istanbul to put in some wider corridors, then by the experience of working together, we'd be ready to go over to uh, North Africa and the Tropic of Cancer, uh, where there's a lot of support to build a humanitarian corridor around the world to develop uh, east-west traffic patterns uh, to alleviate the pressure on the north-south uh, migration and resource conflicts that are currently going on. Uh, China and yeah. India both... Yeah, we got a lot of conversation. What I would say is, I, I heard your, your concerns. Um, I will pass along your concerns for our architect here. Yeah. To see if they can um, come up with some sort of conversation. However, again, Do you have some kind of email or uh, address uh, uh, or name that I could send my uh, notes of the, uh, thereby? I believe, I believe that your name is William Hale? Yes. Okay. I am Rebecca, Rebecca Hertzberg. Um, I will just speak to our architect when he um, holds you for an interview. Okay? Is that like H-E-R-T-Z-B-E-R-G? Correct. Okay. Uh, thanks again, Rebecca.
to go next. Alhamdulillah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the red one. And then we got the blue one here, and then this is done here. 